this drizzly afternoon in St. Helens to Stuart Pike. Thank you, Brian. A blank piece of paper in the playoffs. It's a day for a stunning upset for Warrington, I wonder. Thank or you, will St. Helens take a big step closer to five on the spin? In the regular season, Saints finished 12 points ahead of Warrington, but today it counts for absolutely nothing. It's that blank piece of paper, and who will write the next chapter? Saints get us underway. The winners, if it's Saints, will go to Catalan. If Warrington stun the Super League champs, they will play Wigan. We're expecting fireworks. We're expecting a special playoff. 18 minutes. Well, for this Warrington side, what have they got left in the tank? And how, how long can the big fellas do in the middle of the field missing? In the middle of the field missing the likes of Cassiano and Kelly. You know, it's going to be tough for them. But if you look back at the last five games at these teams have played in knockout rugby Warrington have won them all so they thrive on this sort of pressure they thrive on this team that they're playing against what can they do over 18 well, there's the opening set Williams gets the kick away under pressure from Baxter and here is Jack Wellsby without a shadow of a doubt a match winner will he be a match winner this afternoon Cassiano will be a port, I think, as well for Warrington in the opening stages, without a doubt. First start for a long, long time, John Wells. Yeah, it, it'll have to be, and that's my concern about this Warrington pack. I think with missing Vaughan and missing McKayley, Cassiano's, he only averages 32 minutes, and that's generally in two stints. You look at this bench for Warrington, it is light. Bullock in there, averages less than 40 minutes. Uh, Joe Philbin around the 40 minute mark. Peter Matauta will be expected to come on and play in the middle. That, that will be my big concern uh, with the Warrington Wolves. Sirenin stopped just inside the Warrington half. Last one, and Dodd goes high. An early tester there for Matt Dufty, but takes it comfortable. Uh, the Aussie fullback, who was such a star at the start of the season when, when Warrington raced away with those eight consecutive wins. Well, there's a lot of talk about Jack Wells, and rightly so, how good he is and the influence he has on this side. But you look at Matt Dufty as well. More metres, more tackle bust, more tries. So he's a player that if he gets the, his hands on the ball enough, he'll cause some problems. Here is Ratchford. What Stefan Ratchford would give for a grand final win. The Warrington captain. Four grand final defeats for Ratchford in a Warrington jersey. Yeah, always been playing the bridesmaids. Now listen, this this um, this Saints build-up has understandably been dominated, hasn't it, by James Roby and Lou McCarthy Scars, but both retiring at the end of this season. There's one man we've heard very, very little about as Jack Wellsby takes uh, re reception of the end of the set from Warrington, and that's Johnny Lomax. Johnny Lomax has been so important to the success of St. Helens over so many years. He's involved either by scoring tries, try assists, or three uh, key try involvements. 45 times, only behind Wellsby, and we've heard virtually nothing about him. This is a good defensive effort early on for Warrington. Now, last time we met in round 26, they conceded 12 points, the opening 20. They need a big start. Now, very aggressive, very quick up in defence. And there's the mistake, the first mistake. Percival, it was, and the roar from the thousands of Warrington fans here at the TW Stadium. Yeah, well, one of the best, isn't he, Mark Percival? Well, disrupting tactics, just getting in the face and forcing him into errors. Just 22 metres, they managed to make, carrying the ball forward. This Warrington team, like I said, round 26, first 20 minutes, they were 12 points down. The next 60 minutes, they blew a number of chances against this red-hot Saints side. They've got to take those chances in this game if they want to win. It's off, worth Nick. mentioning as well that there is a steady drizzle here in St. Helens. It's been raining for the last 20 minutes, half an hour or so. Uh, and that, of course, will, will make a difference. We shall see. Here is uh, Connor Rent. First chance then for Warrington after the mistake from Mark Percival. What can they do with it? What can they do with the ball? He's got hold of him. He's holding him. Walker, a dummy half, has been preferred for most of the season, hasn't he? At the starting hooker, Cassiano with the run. Well, that's how you deal with him. Line speed, get up and just stop his progress going forward. No play on three, play on. Fayon says the referee, Ben Thaler, so Danny Four. Walker does, tackled Two. by Lees and his opposite Johnny number, Roby. But they're 15 Go. yards away from that St. Helens try line. Drink water now. Wrench finds Matt Russell and Russell brought down by Benison and by Lewis Dodd. Last one. 
Well, Nicholson, I'm not sure he, he got the no. call, to be fair. He I'm not sure he actually heard the call. No, he was trying to go through it. I think it's Josh Drinkwater on the right-hand side, just giving his team a bit of a serve. On the last play, you need to find a man who's going to kick the ball, and that would be Josh Drinkwater or George Williams, not a back rower. No, they're, in, they're in great attacking position as well. For a side, as you said, Stuart, that conceded an average 13 points a game this year. When you get in those positions, you've really got to challenge St. Helens because they don't give up points easily. Well, it's been a, a chap oh. compromising five minutes, hasn't it? Three, move, Warrington and Gary Chambers, I'm sure Three, the interim coach will be Go. absolutely thrilled and I've no doubt that Sam Burgess will be watching on from Sydney as Lomax tries to spread things and Percival now has support from Bachelor and Makinson now. Makinson's got support inside him, kick through, the chase is on, Percival and Ashton! And Ashton wins the ball and knocks it behind. It's a drop out from underneath the post, but that's what Saint can do, strike from anywhere. Well, that's the reigning champions at the, be at the best. They got up quick on the left-hand side, and then all of a sudden, they just backed off. Problem in the back for, for Bachelor, but the kick over the top, he couldn't get the ball to Percival, and Matty Ashton just comes across to save the day. It looks like the substitute's already been made in Joe Bachelor. That, that's, a, that's a real concern, that's a hamstring injury, that's in the, the, in the chase as St. Helens made the break. And he's immediately off the field, you can see he's clutching the hamstring, then that's never good news. Yeah, I don't think he'll be coming back, six minutes on the clock. Such a key player, isn't he? Joe Batchelor for St. Helens has been outstanding, but his hamstring has gone. We'll get confirmation of that, I'm sure, from Jenna. But James Bell has also been terrific. He's not a bad replacement. That is not a bad replacement to bring when he's been outstanding this year. Played a lot of loose forward. Lomax inside for... Matautia. The brothers will clash at some stage during this game. Sioni for Saints and Peter for Warrington and Belmar looking for a way through. Good tackle coming in from Cassiano. Nicholson up top helping him. Saints go left with Dodd and Sirin and Cavi upload. Forward pass given by the referee Ben Saylor. Cheers again from the Warrington fans. Saints looking dangerous, but Warrington has survived two. Big hits on their line. Yeah, the forward pass, Curtis Sirenham was the scored the opening try against Warrington in round 26 with the same sort of run over on that left hand side. The big powerful threat that he is gives them so much, doesn't he? Curtis Sirenham links up, there's a lot of play with, with Lewis Dodd and causes a lot of teams' problems. I'll tell you why it's that line as well because Jack Wells was out the back and everybody in Super League, every player in Super League knows about the danger of that ball out the back to Wellsby. That, that you have the defenses very often try and slide off in advance. That's why that short ball to Sewan is so effective. Just a bit too cute from Dodd. Forward pass, Warrington a reprieve. Here at Jordy Crowther. He played seven games and he's earned himself a two year deal to stay with the Wolves. Deservedly so. He's been a really strong player for them in the last couple of months. He had agreed to, to go and play at Castleford next year, but Warrington and Cass ironing out the problem, sorting out a deal, and Crowther will stay at Warrington. Wellsby with the pickup. Here is John Benison. Eight minutes gone, nil nil, and it's been as good as we hoped it would be. Yeah, well, this in is not. Second chances, and this Warrington side know that they need to be strong. A number of them, they haven't got the experience that Saints have got in this in the playoff rugby. They're there, they want to entertain. There's no real pressure on them. Everyone's expecting Saints to, to march through to the semis next week, but there's 80 minutes to go through. We'll have a chat. Oh, good ball from Bell. Now Knowles is away. He's got Lomax in support. He didn't see him. And Ashton again comes to the rescue. That twice in three minutes that Matthew Ashton has saved Warrington. Played the ball. Bell goes on his own. Percival oh. drops the ball in the act of scoring. Wow. What a chance for St. Helens. But what defending as well from Warrington. And that's why James Bell's been getting an awful lot of attention. The man that he took his place when he was suspended in Morgan Hall's benefit from the short little pass. Drags a lot of defenders, gets their eyes at the defenders, James Bell. Nice little subtle play. Look at that, Dufty facing in. 
And then all of a sudden, out wide to Percival and Stefan Ratchford coming up trumps with that tackle. Oh, you've had some, some, and you can see the frustration on Paul Wellens' face. You've had three try saving involvements there, but two by Matty Ashton and one by Steph Ratchford. Just gets enough on the ball to deny Percival an opening try. I think what will possibly frustrate Paul Wellens is that Tommy Makinson was unmarked on his own five yards out and could have walked in for the try. But it is what it is, a brave Warrington defence. They survive. Ten minutes gone, it stays nil-nil. How, how do you see this, test? Do you see this as Warrington hanging on, or do you see this as Warrington gaining confidence from this defence? At the minute, you'd say that they're hanging on in, in this game. Like Saints, you break them a couple of times, you get a couple of chances. Sooner or later, one of those chances will pay off. Big tackle on Stefan Ratchford there with the influence of, of James Bell, who's recently signed on until the end of 2025. Oh, and there's the mistake. Morgan knows it since. Knows on Cassiano. That'll be something to keep an eye out for all afternoon. Look, to be a, a champion side, you've got to have champion defenders. Morgan knows. Look, he hits Sam Cassiano. You can see his head rock back. They are the hunters. They start games with a real intent and they're ferocious and knowing that if you take some meters off him Cassiano you get in his eye line you take the, the space away from him he's not as effective and down near their own line that's when they know they can get up quick gonna be another big set for Warrington to defend Matty Ashton twice saving the walls with his pace first to win the race to the ball behind the line from Tommy Makinson and then to bring down Morgan Knowles. Lomax, mistake on the first, and Warrington celebrating as if they scored. Saints error after error after error in this opening 12 minutes. Well, you could tell by the way that the Warrington pack were forming then. It was all about getting out of the pack as quick as you could. It was Matty Nicholson who breaks, and his speed, his effort, just forces that. The inside pressure on Johnny Lomax, who always goes at the line and tries to isolate defenders. And that lifts Warrington, every single one of their players, lifts them hugely. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Is, it, is this Warrington hanging on or is this Warrington gaining confidence just on Johnny Lomax? He engages the line a lot, on average, 13 times a game. That's more than any other player in a Saints jersey. And Warrington know that. And they, they know the danger that that causes. Well, we saw... Joe Batchelor leaving the field after just six minutes for St Helens, clutching his hamstring. Jenna has news. Yes, Stuart, I can tell you that before kickoff, I did notice that that right hamstring was already strapped, so perhaps it was a, an existing issue, but I can tell you that he is frustrated. Uh, they've um, put ice on it immediately, and the doctors will uh, do further assessments um, at half-time, but he's unlikely to return, which is a huge loss, isn't it? Uh, 14 wins from 16 appearances for him this year. That was Williams with the kick, thanks Jenner, and it's dropped by Wellesby, it's dropped on by Curry. Well, Wellesby yeah, saying that Ben it was a Curry strip and it went got forward. a little hand on that. Yeah, you can see that when he used his footwork, he, he tries to beat Curry. Well, and there's a little clutch, there's a little play at that ball, it goes forward. Well, fortunately for Ben Curry, but good signs from him. Getting up quick, taking time off Jack Wellesby. Curry <laughs> may be a little unlucky. Ready, stand by! Can it bang? Can it 13 minutes gone. Out. Nil nil. Roby out of the back of the scrum. He's quiet That's so far, move. isn't he, Roby? On his 550th oh. St Helens appearance, but he will play a big part in this game. At some stage, well, he's Bell once more. He'll be pretty calm. He, he, he's a really composed, humble Go. guy, like Brian Go. Carney said Go. Go. before the game. He knows how to play these games, as does this Go. man, Johnny Lomax. Two. Move, John. Back three. Three. Lomax, of course, Go. player Go. of the match Go. in the grand final Go. last year. Four. The Move. grand final Go. last year had Go. already been Go. played. Go. Go. It was brought forward because of the World Cup. Saints had already won it. 24th of September, wasn't it? And they beat the, the Leeds Rhinos at Old Trafford. But nil-nil here. 14 minutes on the clock. There's a high hanging kick. Dusty lets it bounce. And, and that's it. You've got to, someone's got to call for that ball. Whether it be you could see Dusty just hesitate thinking one of the players in front. As soon as this ball go, goes up, 
you've got to help your teammate around you. And you could see that neither Matty Russell or Connor Wrench wanted anything to do with that. Dangerous, dangerous player, that. I will, I will say this. Defensively, St Helens look like St Helens. In attack, this, this, this does not look like a settled side yet, and an awful lot for Wellens to think about. Here is young Connor Wrench, 20 years of age. Right here. Go. Oh, Russell. Again, it's Morgan Nolan, isn't it? Matty Lees. And he's key at coming out of backfield. Matty Russell starts the set off really well. Cassiano not getting much change out well, of Saints. Big Sam, but better. plays the ball quickly. That is better from Cassiano, isn't it? Well, Danny Walker thought of that. They might have been able to get a penalty then. He moves yeah, he's looking for the offside. James Quick play the ball. Drink water. That's a good kick. Really good kick from Josh Drinkwater. And Saints with Makinson that close to their own line. Warrington may only have been inside the Saints 21 so far in this game, but they're holding firm with 15 minutes on the clock. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I said about Matty Russell. He started that playoff with a strong carry, then Cassiano, then the kick on the front foot. And that's why, why they're down here now. Saints probably didn't expect it on the fourth play. And in playoff rugby, you've got to finish your sets well, get to the end, get to the oh, kick, chase really hard and try and slow the rook down. Back, Sam, go for. Well, it is that blank piece of paper, isn't it? When they come to the playoffs, what has gone before counts for absolutely right. now. Yeah, uh, exactly. And Warrington are giving it a really good fear. Go. It's interesting, uh, really good go, that John Wilkin was talking about the phrase, no fear for Warrington. When I spoke to Gary Chambers, the interim coach yesterday, they are the words he used. That's how we have to play. No fear. And make no mistake, he said, we will give it to them. We'll give it a good go. Yeah, and that's and look, conversely to that, you've got St Helens here playing at home. I've made five fan handling errors in, in the opening 15 minutes of the game. That is so unlike them. Well, look, Warrington have already made the first substitution. Joe Philbin's on for Sam Cassiano. 16 minutes he's managed to last in this game. Look, these games are ferocious and they are also probably the quickest games that you'll play in the season good kick from walker again look at that that's a brilliant kick from young danny walker look, where it is being fielded by jack wellsby who darts out of play wellsby has support now from hopperwarty hopperwarty's got to fault if he needs it from wellsby wellsby's interested hopperwarty tried to run through Matt Dusty. give a big rap to james harrison getting back then because he stopped saints getting a two on a two on one well done that front rower two and Wellesley forced to take the tackle. St Helens again piling the pressure on that Warrington try line. But as yet, they've not been able to come up with any points. Bell, right in front of the post, 15 yards away. Roby now as they come to the right. Lomax looking for a way through and he's a couple of yards away from the try line. Still opportunities here for St Helens. Dodd and Wellesby swings it out to Benison, but he has to cut inside. Russell's there, Wrench is there to make the tackle. Desperate Warrington defending. Last one, Wellesby, can he kick the ball through? He does, and it will go dead. And again, the Warrington fans absolutely cheering to the last. Well, you, you just look at the break here from Jack Wellesby, but look at the, the effort from James Harrison. If he doesn't push up here and he doesn't get involved in, like, come up with the effort to mark Jack Wellsby. That's a try because it's a two-on-one. It's a big, big effort from a front rower. Yeah, Basically, he stopped Hopperwati passing. It cuts, yeah, it cuts, the, pass, yeah. It cuts the pass option One. off, and it's, you know, it's an amazing piece of front-loaded effort there from a, from a forward. And, you know, I'll go back to my earlier point as Philbin carries the ball. One of these subs, these, these forwards do not play big minutes. Peter Matauchi is going to have to play in an unaccustomed position at some point during this game. Here's Drinkwater for Warrington, but Gary Chambers, their interim coach, will be absolutely thrilled with the way that his side has performed. It's mostly been defending, but they've kept St Helens out. There he is. Sam Burgess watching on from Sydney. Drink water, again with a little chip over the top, and 
Black just have a little bit too much on it. No, it doesn't. Wellsby has to take it right inside in goal and does, in the end, does really well, Wellsby, to, to squeeze out. But that clearly a tactic of Warrington. We've seen it from Drinkwater, we've seen it from Walker. It's a set restart for those kicks and kicks and kicks yeah. to pin Saints back on their own line. Oh, they've just given away a high shot on the back of a set restart. It was all about that effort, the start of the sets, getting off the line. And that rook control, trying to make it slow. You can see them all. Look at that, nice and condensed. They go quick. There's a swinging arm. Oh, they're offside. Sorry, but look at this effort. Jack Wellsby hit up top from Nicholson. Connor wrench down below. Big, big play from them. These are really good. They're really good clearing kicks from the Warrington Wolves as well, because the long kicks that find space that doesn't often happen against a back three of the quality of St Helens. And what it does do, it takes the forwards out of the equation for carries two and three, allows Warrington to compress in defence and apply some pressure. Just a shame they let them off the hook on that occasion. Approaching, well, we have reached the midway point of the first half. St Helens dominant two. Um, Still scoreless, 53% of the balls St Helens have seen, but Warrington, some of their defence has been desperate, but some of their fence has been really, really impressive. Bell again, inside the Warrington half. Who will be playing Catalan next week? Who will be playing Wigan? All will be revealed in the next hour or so at the TW Stadium. Live on Sky Sports as Bell feeds Morgan Knowles, and again it's the last one. What can Saints come up with here? Is there a play in the book? Is there a trick up the sleeve? It's Dodd who goes towards the corner. Pressure on Russell who takes it really well. Big pressure from Hopperati, but well taken by Matt Russell. Well, nice kick, wasn't it, from Lewis Dodd? Just drops it on point, and now it's sent to the, the ones who just want to try and get in the faces of Warrington. Well, let me tell you, these, these sort of conditions, this sort of pressure, playing against the champion side, knowing that you've had the metal on them a couple of times in, in playoff rugby, and you want to be, you want to be the player, you want to be in the team that knocks out Saints, 100. percent And this is where they'll get you. The, this this defensive set is where it'll get Warrington a minute from now, a minute further down the line. Well, they've got a, they've a, got a high shot. Warrington asked for it. Ben Thayer saw with a little bit of a high shot. On the fourth tackle as well. You know, you'd have to rise to the occasion playing these challenges. Look, you can see it just slips up, doesn't it? Yeah. Matty Lees. From Matty Lees. And how good's he been this year? You know, stepping in. And Alex Wormsley was out. Ignatius Passy was out. I think he really stepped up and bringing him back into the side last week. Wow. What an influence he'll have the back end of the year. But that penalty is a massive bonus for Warrington yeah, the situation of the game still nil nil 18 minutes to half time then yeah but what we want to do Danny is keep it going downside yeah, Jordy okay. Crowther Drop. is okay there is Matty Lees and it really is a relieving penalty drink water finds touch just inside his own half and the big thing for for Warrington now don't over complicate it just make sure that you, you keep it simple and you get that field position you want George Williams near the Saints' line. If George Williams has enough sets near Saints' line, Warrington will score some points. It's actually getting up there, it'll be difficult. Harrison met by one, two, three, four St. Helens defenders. Walker at dummy half. Yeah, they must, be, they must be pleased with the way that they're, they're defending, but how much is it going to take out of them? Well, it certainly does. It the intensity and pace yeah. of the playoffs. Three, move! Inside the St. Helens half of the field. They squeezed into the playoffs in sixth place after their season collapsed. But they're very much in this now with Ratchford. Haven't seen too much of George Williams yet. And here he is, Williams now, looking for a way through. Is there going to be an offload? Time, Last tackle, again. midway inside the Saints okay, half of the field. Wait, They'll go. probably look for Drinkwater, and there he is on the right edge, and Drinkwater will lift it high towards John Benison. Does well, the young winger. Put a grand final winner 12 months ago. Alex Wormsley about to come on for St Helens with 17 minutes to go to half-time. Well, it's probably not what you want to see, is it? Alex Wormsley returning to the field. 
We all know that he'll make a, a huge impact what he brings to the side. His goal forwards better than most in Super League. Well, it's a remarkable uh, recovery. He, he, he stunned everybody inside the St. Helens club. When he got that knee injury against Lee in the semi-final, Challenge Cup semi-final, it was season over. But to come back, and he made his comeback in the win uh, last week. And well, now that Percival for making some swivels out of Wall and passes it straight into the arms of Matty Afton, but it's a penalty. It's a penalty for St. Helens, I think. Was someone taken off the ball? Let's see what Ben Saylor says. Just a minute, the ball's clearly gone. Yeah, Matauti was hit off the ball. Oh, George Williams, did just he defensive. just set himself? You can see he goes in, there's Matauti, sets himself, hits him. See it? George, come here. It's just a lap trip. Listen, the ball is the gone. Captain. It's shoulder to shoulder. Yeah, like it is a penalty. Make sure you're wrapped next time. That's it. You know. Well, declaration from Ben Saylor, the referee. <laughs> it looked like he was committed. Well, he, what, he was committed. Well, he's not. He's, it's, it's the wrapping yeah, motion. It's a lack of wrapping motion, which is the reason. That's he's been penalised for. Yeah, I think that, and then the biggest, the biggest telltale sign is that George Williams was very quick to say yes, ref, yes, ref, just to, <laughs> to get on with it before that escalated. Danny Tens, go, Danny Walker, yeah. LMS is on. One minute, 37 Jordan. years of age, the war Danny horse that is. Louis McCarthy, Scarsbrook, his last game in the stadium, and here. It had been coming, Warrington had held out for 25 minutes. But Lewis Dobb, the puncher, gives St. Helens the lead in this elimination playoff. Well, they're a team that just don't miss the jump, did he? If they can see a play unfolding in front of their eyes, everyone seems to be an option. And when Bell supplies that ball yet again, they go through with Curtis Sirenen and Lewis Dobb just pushed up in support, he knows the threat that Bell can be when he has that ball. He gets on the other side of Drinkwater, and it was nice play, wasn't it, from the back rower, who just supplies the pass at the right time. But look at that, he looked a touch forward, to be fair, from Bell. The referee doesn't call it, saying to get the points. It's been coming, it's took 25 minutes, this opening try, and Paul Wellens knows that those points were so important after all the field position they've had early on. Well, Lewis Dorr played every game this year. Of course, he suffered that horrendous snapped Achilles, which ruined his season last year and forced him to, to miss the grand final. But he's been back in business, Lewis Dodd, and that is 10th try of the season. Percival to turn four into six for St Helens. With a pulsating game. And it is Mark Percival having the extra to Lewis Dodd's try. And St Helens lead with 14 minutes and a half time by six points to nil. Just take a look at Lomax's movement out the back. That throws the Warrington defence. We were talking about Wellsby's threat before. Lomax provides the same threat. And it actually, it actually makes the Warrington player drift off and open up a space there for Sirenen, who provides a brilliant lead line. And then Lewis Dodd backing up for the opening score of uh, eliminator number two well he's a dangerous player bell i think he's been exceptional i don't know look at that try again it just looked as though it went a touch forward from james belt and he supplied that pass for sirenen to go through well, at the end of the afternoon we will know who is going where and playing who the st helen's win will always send them to the catalan dragons and that's what it is at the moment saints are going to perfect run next friday and hulk kr will be playing wigan next Saturday but no. plenty of time for things to change 13 minutes to half time St Helens six in front yeah I don't think Mike Rush is booking the plane just yet I think there's plenty more <laughs> twists and turns in this game I think I've been really impressed actually with how Warrington have acquitted themselves this opening 26 27 minutes
defensively and structurally they've been very good, but they've got to carve out chances. Yeah, they've got to try and put pressure on St. Helens. And it actually took a, a pretty special piece of play to break them open as well. Lomax with a kick downfield. Dufty racing across, takes it right in front of the try line. The welcome and party is there, and it's Makinson who brings him down with a bit of help from Percival. But Percival was too keen, set restart. And Warrington will try and bring it away and try and find a way to have that ball on the St Helens try line. Well, the accuracy of, of the kick as well from Saints will be will be so important. You can see the support that they then have through the defensive structures and systems, and they get off the line and. They know that Warrington, through Connor Rents, trying to cart the ball up. If he's on his own, he can get numbers in and try and slow him down again. It's Danny Walker on the third play. Great kick. Well, they've been a feature, haven't they, of Warrington's play. The kicks early in the tackle count from both Walker and Drinkwater. Trying to pin Saints back and then trying to force the error to give them some field position. Look, get a, get a decent kick away, but then don't give them an opportunity if someone just clocks off and doesn't get in the defensive line. Like we saw when Jack Wellsby broke through. We've got to make sure that everyone's connected at the lines intact. Makinson, always a winning, a willing runner from the play, the ball inside his own half of the field. James Roby, St Helens game number 550. Wormsley with a hand in the face of Walker trying to push him off. Nicholson makes the tackle. Wellsby now digs the kick over. And that will just drift it into touch. But St Helens there in a set getting from their own try line to within 10 yards of Warrington's line. Yeah, and it's a nice little kick as well. If that bounces up, it's an option there to hold somebody and put into touch. Also, what it does, it takes Matty Russell out of the equation. I was trying to think where Warrington's metres were going to come from as these forwards tired. Well, the jobs for guys like Matty Russell are absolutely massive. We know he's a great, strong ball carrier, so sticking the ball off the, off the field and taking a breather, I think it's a really smart move from Saints. Crowd that plays the ball. Go again. Says Ben Saylor. Go! And over. One and for all that Saints dominance, Warrington have only made wait, 10 tackles wait, more. Wait. Louis, keep coming! Two Carry on the charge. Ready. It was wait. well read by Warnsley and by Lomax. Here is Peter Matautia on the field. Three minutes. And that is the tactic then. So he has come on as a middle replacement. He's come. He's come on for James Harrison. He's going to play in the middle. We know him as a centre. We know him as a potential ball player. It's a different position. This for Pete Walker going the short side. Dufty and Rashford and Ashton does really well to hang on. Now the danger from Ashton. Williams looking for a way through. That's better. Rashford just down in back play. The Warrington captain. But on the last, Drinkwater goes wide, goes high, and Bennison does really, really well under pressure again from that man Nicholson. That was a crucial tackle, that then, on George Williams. George Williams on his right-hand side had Matt Dufty in support. If he gets through that tackle, they score a try. It's that simple. It was James Roby, wasn't it, who came up with a, with a defensive tackle? I think it was. Just goes to show you the evergreen, and what a great take as well from Bennison. Much more like it though from, from the Wolves with the ball. Nine minutes to half time. St Helens leading. Solitary try scored by Lewis Dodd, but it took them 25 minutes to get it. Here is Roby. Misses out Wormsley. Dodd. Oh, that's a terrible kick. I'm not sure about that as a play either. That was on the penultimate tackle. Lewis Dodd apologising, but now. He's put his side under pressure, and yeah. this is the moment you feel that Warrington have been waiting well, for. Well, it just comes off the side of his, of his boot, doesn't he? Yeah, that acknowledges yeah. the mistake. Maybe they'll get now. I think Danny Walker started the game really strongly. The opening 31 Very minutes they brought now on Darrell Clark onto the field. The number nine, he's going to be spending time over the next few years at Saints next season. They're bringing him on. And just as George Williams as well was involved in the play, in the previous One, set that Warrington had the ball, he just seemed to pull away. Alex, just looked a bit as though he was clutching Go. around his, his groin earlier. Here's Matautia, his Two. brother, Sione is in Two. there to complete Two. the tackle. Go. 
as good a field position as Warrington have had in the entire match so far, and we've played 32 minutes. Good charge from, from Joe Philbin, right in front of that St Helens post. Clark, and a little short pass out from Ramsford, and Aston manages to keep it in play, but it's picked up there by Matanti, and Williams gets across with an important tackle. Well, great defence from Saints to deny Warrington Emmer again. It's another good shot from George Williams, isn't it? Saints could have been free. It's an outstanding piece of defence by Tommy Makinson. That's a try saving because it's so easy there to sink in, particularly when it looks like your, your centre's beaten on the outside. Incredible amount of trust shown there by Tommy Makinson on his on his centre on the inside. What a defensive effort. Here is Wormsley. Of course, Wormsley coming onto the field. And as well as Lou McCarthy, Scarsbrook has allowed Saints the luxury of putting Metalti out back into the second row and back onto the flanks, but he, he took a heavy hit there. Here is Dodd. Bit better of a kick that time, and Russell has to take it right in front of his own try line. Six and a half minutes to half time. Six nils St Helens in front. Yeah, some honesty in these players. For me, I think both sides are, are ripping into each other. There's nothing between them in the stats. I think Warrington, you look, probably they missed seven more tackles than Saints. And it's just going to go end to end, end to end. Who's going to crack? Yeah, they're six points behind Warrington. Three. Well, let Boom. me tell you, they're well in this game. game Absolutely, Eight. they are. No, no contribution. With players like Ratchford and Williams, for and Curry, and Johnny. Dusty coming back from the inside. back. Go for. Matty Ashton, of course, they have the Jake, firepower. Not in. Not in. Another good kick, and that'll roll out. Saints will get the ball back on, on their own 10, but been a clear tactic and for the most part it's been a, an effective tactic for Warrington kicking early and putting the pressure on Saints inside their own 20. Yeah absolutely long kicks fine space bonus if it goes off the park as well which brings us back to the point we were talking about right at the start which is the concern I had about this Warrington bench this interchange it's not big the players don't have don't play big minutes, so get the rest into them while you can. That's the perfect way to do it. How, how has Joe Philbin been the number 15 or since he's come on? I think he's been absolutely immense carrying the ball forward. Look at that, that line speed. That's how you win playoff rugby. 35 minutes gone, St Helens leading 6-0. But delighted to say we're joined by the Warrington interim coach, Gary Chambers. It's been a it's been a heck of an effort so far, Gary. Yeah, yeah, not bad at all, mate. We've just got to be smarter on when we're up in, in St. Helens half and, and, and stop opening up, really. We've been dented a couple of times there. But, but for a bit more effort, we we could do something with it. One thing that's been noticeable is kicking early in the tackle count, putting the pressure on St. Helens inside their own 20. Yeah, it's, it was something we've looked at in the week and we have to do because we just, you know... Just throwing lads in one out and, and getting them knocked like that, coming out of the yard, it's just, it's just not good for anyone. Gary, thank you. Thank you. We won't have been pleased with that play, though. Six again, Saints with a chance to attack. Wellsby goes on his own quickly from dummy half. Wellsby looking through the gap. Nicholson again in there with the tackle. With drink water, but that's a penalty. That's a silly, silly penalty to give away by Josh Drinkwater. At this stage in a playoff game, there was no need. No, and I'm sure they'll go for two points here, look. I'm with you, Shubert, there's no need. They give a set restart away on the fourth play. They then max down the field, then they give this penalty away. You've just got to make sure you wrap the ball up. That's all they needed to do. Yeah, drink water's right. cost aside two points there. Makes it a two-score game, doesn't it, for, for the Warrington Wolves, who are banging this, by the way. They have had a, a magnificent first half, first 40 minutes. Mark Percival will try and add the extras, and I, and I guess in a tight if playoff you, game, this has to be the right call. That, that's what you do it in games like this. Paul Wellen sends down a mess. I'm sure that the Saints players are already thinking about that. That in tight games, in playoff rugby, you take the points that are on offer. Like Warrington and, and through Gary Chambers, and he talked about, they've absolutely nailed the game plan. Kick early, kick third, kick fourth, be disciplined, play Saints down near their own line, challenge them. In conditions like this, you can force an error, you can hit under the ball, but you can't gift them two points like they have done here. Back of that set restart. Yeah, spot on. Mark Percival. 
to make it a two score game. St Helens lead by eight points to nil with three minutes to go to half time. Delight for the Saints fans, but uh, Paul Wellens will be happy, I'm sure, the Saints are in the lead and still have some aspect to put right at, at half time. But I just reiterate what a silly penalty that was to give away. Yeah, it's just a, a lapse in concentration from Josh Drinkwater. It's you know, as a result of such a dangerous attacking run from Jack Wellsby, you never know when he's tackled, he's such a slippery character, but yeah, it's, it's as, you know, as clear as you get that from Drinkwater, and he'll be disappointed in himself, just looking at, referring back to these stats, Tess, they are very there even, there's one there that stands out, and that is the break from St. Hel St. Helens. St. Helens have gone through Warrington's line four times, now you put the fact that the scoreline is only 8-0 down to some great last-ditch defensive work from Warrington, but they cannot carry on in that fashion. Neil McCarthy scars, but who was the first man there to meet him with a hefty challenge? It was it was George Williams who's putting in a shift in defence. Here's Matautia tackled by his brother Peter on Sioni. Two and a half minutes to go to half time. St Helens leading, but Warrington a bang in this game, make no mistake. Here's James Bell. If you are just joining us, Saints lost. Back here, Peter, wait, three. Big player for them, Joe Over Batchelor to, to a, a hamstring injury inside six minutes Woo! of this Four. game, unlikely back. to come back. Go. Morgan Go. Knowles will be back, and he's a key element of what Saints have done so far. Ready, On the last, Go. just inside their own half of the field. Okay. And Lomax right, gets the kick away, but should be James. simple Play for Dufty. Now. And there's, can Warrington find a way through in the closing stages of the half? Dusty, but it looked like it was opening up for him. It did. And it, he slipped. It did open up, didn't it? That's how we saw Dangerous going across that line, scanning for the, for the hole. It opens up for him and he just loses his footing. Fine margins. And it's, look, it's a reward for a good defensive set from Warrington. It forced Lomax into that, that kick that's neither into open space like Warrington have been doing or off the field and it gives it the opportunity to people like Dufty one of the best broken field runners in Super League scene in 2023 80 seconds of the first half to go say no Ben Saylor says yes James Bell guilty penalty to Warrington and they're going to get a set they're going to get a crack at the Saints line yeah the last set I'm sure they're saying that oh he nearly didn't find a touch, then Tommy Mason touched the ball. Lateral, where do you want it? The lateral. So lateral play the ball, where do you want it? Wasn't it from Drinkwater and making some in the middle. Nearly the tapping middle, it lateral. back inside the field of play. He jumps on the field of play and touched it. Right there. So they're gonna get three or four tackles, you would think, on the Saints line. What a boot this would be for Go. Warrington right on the stroke of half time. Matanti have brought okay, down, 12 yards away from the Saints line. Clark, inside it goes for Two. Philbin. Matanti are in there with the tackle. Play ball. Two. Go. Again, they go the short side. Williams go pops the ball up for Ben Curry. Move, 10 Two. seconds to go. One play, maybe two. Oh, he's lost the ball. Oh, it's a knock-on. It's a knock-on. And that will be hugely disappointing for Ben Curry. For Johnny Lomax, it's a big play for St. Helens at the end of a pulsating first half. Paul Wellens will have some words of wisdom, so will Gary Chambers. Warrington have given everything. They're still in it against the Super League champs. Half time, St. Helens lead by eight points to nil. Stuart, John, Terry, thank you very much. Let me tell you, the sizable Warrington Wolves travelling contingent here at the home of the champions. Well, they have found their voices, and why wouldn't they? Underdogs today that they trail by just eight. A late Mark Percival penalty, and of course, Lewis Dodds try. 24 minutes into that first 40 minutes, broke the deadlock and gave the champions the lead. They've held on to that. We'll analyse it with John Wilkin and Wigan Warriors assistant coach Sean O'Loughlin after this. They have finally...
made it to the grand final at Old Trafford. The players cannot fail but be lifted by all of this. be decided in October and live with us here on Sky Sports. Sunday, October the 8th, the women's grand final, York Valkyrie against the reigning champions. The Leeds Rhinos, we're on Arena and Mix at 2.30 p.m. The men's grand final at Old Trafford on Saturday. Finalists yet to be determined, 5 p.m. Again on Arena and main event of the following day. It'll be the Betfred Wheelchair Super League grand final, 5 p.m. Sky Sports Arena. Will St. Helens make it back to Old Trafford once more and have a tilt at retaining this trophy they have held for four years now? Will they lead in the first of their chances to uh, retain the trophy in the elimination stage of the playoffs? They have an 8-0 lead over the challenging Warrington Wolves, who slipped into sixth in the playoff positions, but are very much in this game as the rain falls here at the home of the champions. And welcome back, John Wilkin and Wigan Warriors assistant coach Sean O'Loughlin, who has no doubt enjoyed that first 40 minutes and is awaiting opposition next week. As it stands, you'll face Hulk KR next Saturday live on Sky Sports. But Warrington still have plenty to say in this game. Uh, 100%. I think it's very much, very much still in the balance. Uh, I think Saints have had the edge. Um, Carved them up a little bit. Um, clean breaks. Probably not polished them off, but I think overall it's still very much tight. Warrington has scrambled hard in defence and they've they worked for each other, but it's probably a little bit more from them than the attack needed. Yeah, pick up on that point of Warrington's defence in the opening exchanges as we look at the first action from the first 40 minutes. They had to scramble hard and pull off some remarkable last-ditch efforts in defence. Yeah, it was all about St Helens creating opportunities and carving opportunities through Jack Wellsby and James Bell, but also about Warrington's resilience and their chase back. Because since whenever they moved the ball early in the game, it looked dangerous. This is Jack Wellsby. It's a poor effort from Warrington on the inside of the line. But once it gets out there, what we see here quite telling, actually, Bachelor pulls up with a hamstring injury. We thought that could be big. But what about the chase back from Warrington? Yeah, these, these are moments in, in big games that like you've got to be there. You've got to be in the picture. You've got people chasing back. It shows, a, it shows a willingness to your team that you're hungry to get the results. And the, the amount of numbers in shirts are in the, in the picture that town's... That may look too easy for people. So we're complimenting Warrington's defence, but at the same time showing Kassane's carving them up. Yes, yeah, they carved them up, but they couldn't quite finish it off, could they? That was James Bell's soft pass to Percival. But like I said, this man Wells being architect of time and space. Well, they created opportunities. Hopawati in the distance but Harrison as a man who's on the field and who's tired from the attritional game in the middle of the field it's a great chase back from him and this maybe summed up the first 20 minutes lots of opportunities lots of clean breaks but maybe not quite clinical or five errors five errors after 15 minutes for in St Helens interesting though they cleaned that up at the end of the 40 minutes they only had those five errors as well to their name uh, in defensive uh, discipline as well something we spoke about in tight games like this George Williams conceding a relatively needless penalty with a shoulder charge that gave St. Helens tremendous field position on which they capitalised. Yeah, that, that territory, territory battle is, is going on constantly and little penalties like that, it's, it's harsh, but it's, it's there in those rules and giving little little ones up like that, they, they take the toll come the end of the game. Yeah, jo Philbin needs to get out of the ruck quicker, he retreats late out of the ruck and then it's about this man, James Bell, organising shit. Yeah, he's been, a, he's been a threat there at the middle, Bell, he's... He's got that. He's got a great ability to kind of split defenders and, and make people account for people they don't want to account for, and, and then they get the joy in the back of this. Yeah, and it's Lewis Dodd supported up the middle of the field. Great pass. pass. It's, it's a line ball for me. It's a great support line. Sean Dodd up the middle pass. of the field. It's a former Saint. It's a line ball. Well, no. What say you? 50-50. Uh, okay. Well, let's <laughs> exactly look. what I said. <laughs> let's look at the stats. There's nothing 50-50, shall we say, about possession. 55 to 45 in favour of the reigning champions. Line breaks four to nil. But there's a coming from a combination of some poor Warrington Wolves defence and St. Helens through James, the likes of James Bell, pushing a pass. Yeah, they're moving around a little bit more than Warrington and doing to their defence. But, but yeah, Warrington will be disappointed. Some of those, there's been blocks not had a hand laid on them and the purely clean breaks. OK, if Warrington Wolves might be disappointed with that, will St. Helens be disappointed with the fact they're only 8-0 in front? I think they speak so much, and Paul Wellens and Lauren Fresen, who speak so much about the long game, I don't think they'll be disturbed that it's only 8-0. But for me as an observer, I watch Saints a lot. 
I just get switched watching them be in games where they could be way further ahead and they simply don't get far enough away from teams. 8 0 is comfortable. Do you know what's more comfortable? 12 0, 14 0, 16 0, it's game over. So the, the challenge for Saints is just 8 0. If Warrington could come out here and put one on Saints and get the first try, then then we're on. Yeah, I think with the amount of clean breaks they've had there, Warrington, uh, sorry, St. Helens would have liked to have scored more points than they have. All right, well, construct a way back for the Warrington Wolves. I mean, tighten up defensively, but offensively, how are they going to challenge St. Helens? They've been playing a very deliberate game, kicking in the corner, kicking early, and trying to pin St. back, but they've got to put points on. Yeah, I think that's got a bit of game plan again, but they're going to have to probably move the ball a little bit more than they have done. I think when they're coming out of their exit, they've, they've kind of run direct, they've run out, but they've been straight into the tee for St. Helens. They probably need to get a little bit more action on the edges. We'll see if we get that in the second 40 minutes. We are wonderfully poised here at the Totally Wicked Stadium. Just eight between them. Remember, the reigning champions, heavy favourites going into this one. But the Warrington Wolves, they will not go away. They trail by eight. Can they recover and drag themselves back into this game? You'll find out with us here on Sky Sports from a rainy St. Helens after this. that Lewis Dodd try the only score the only score uh, try scoring uh, play of the first half I should say I'll get my words out eventually as St. Helens lead 8-0 against the Warrington Wolves they may feel though that they have left some points behind after that first 40 minutes St. Helens hoping to get to the Super League Grand Final we've got NRL Grand Finals coming up for you this Sunday on Sky Sports Tomorrow morning, the Knights take on the Titans. What a resurrection it has been for the Gold Coast side. 5.20 a.m. on Arena and on Main Event. And then the Penrith Panthers hoping to secure a third consecutive trophy. Go up against the Brisbane Broncos side looking for a first win on the big night since 2006. 8.30 a.m. that one on Sky Sports Arena. Well, the rain continues to fall here at St. Helens. I wonder, I just wonder if I can put it to you like this, Sean O'Loughlin, if that will play into the hands of either of these sides, the conditions. Um, no, I don't think it will. I think both are going to try and score points. They both, they both want to probably be a bit better in attack, so the, the conditions are probably better. They're both just screwing up. Maybe an obvious thing to say, you touched on it before the break, the first score of the second half. 14 mil to St. Helens, that may be too big a mountain for Warrington to climb. Yeah, you can't simply scramble well and survive in a game like this. You're going to have to impose yourself and score some points. Ball movement, George Williams, Matt Dufty, get in the game. It's easier said than done. Pre-game, you said St. Helens by plenty. Are you going to adjust down any? Yeah, no, I've not done see any evidence that Warrington could come back over St. here. OK. Well, there is only eight between them, James Bell. What a season he has had for St. Helens. On earlier, maybe, than expected after Joe Batchelor lived off with a hamstring injury. Well, that has gone in Warrington's favour. They got big Sam Cassiano warming up just behind our presentation position, ready to come on when called by Gary Chambers, the interim coach of the Warrington Wolves. Second half about to start here. Paul Willans overseeing maybe another St. Helens victory and a step closer to Old Trafford. Let's get back to our commentary team of John Wells, Terry O'Connor and Stuart Pike. Right, thank you. The rain is falling just that little bit heavier and it's getting heavier all the time. Whether that will play a key part in the second half of this elimination playoff, we shall see what try has decided it. Saints winning nine on the spin. But it still wasn't good enough for a top two finish. Jack Wellsby outstanding in the first half. James Bell coming on after just six minutes for the injured. Joe Batchelor, Curtis Sirenin, the man who made the try for the Saints. Warrington tactically most of it, they got it right in that first half, but as we've all been saying, with ball in hand, they've got to step it up a gear or two. Yeah, that's right, and you know they've got to think when they're, they're out here now and go through the process of playing, complete your set to six, be ruthless, have the mindset of where am I, what's my job, what we're going to do for everyone around me. It's going to be a big start, a big ten minutes here for Warrington. Big start of the year they had. Fell off in the middle, how can they finish the year? 
just interested. I wonder if Gary Chambers was, was playing on emotion during half time. That, those two words he was talking about no fear. You've done the first job, you've kept Saints to eight points. We're still in this, we've still got a chance of causing a, a big upset. Yeah, the, the only problem to counter that is that Saints are conceded just on average 13 points a game. So you, you, you look at that and you're going, well, Warrington, I've got to post points. As the guys in the studio have said, it's how they go about doing that. More, more ball movement, more challenges for these edge defenders for Saints to face. Sirenin just shy of halfway. Roby for Alex Wormsley. That recovery from a knee injury. Back in business at the business end of the season. Dodd, the try scorer. It's a teasing kick and it's taken, taken by McCarthy. Garthbrook. Oh, you can tell LMS was so close. <laughs> wow, two minutes gone. Saints with the first chance, maybe, of the second half. They lead 8 0. Uh, we're talking now to their assistant coach, Laurent Fresenu. Uh, Laurent, you feel that if Saints get another try at the start of this second half, that could be enough. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. We, you know, we play a uh, uh, Warrington team with uh, full of talents. Uh, you know, George Williams, uh, Daryl Clark, Ben Walker. Like, they're, they're very dangerous. So for us, it's about keep on uh, being good defensively and uh, and nail uh, uh, our op opportunities when uh, when it will present. I've got to ask you about Joe Bachelor. His hamstring it didn't look too good. Yes, he's, he's, uh, he's got it in the dressing room. Uh, we'll see what the scan will say in the next few, few days. Thanks, Laura. Thank you. So here we go with Warrington and Drinkwater. Quick hands and digs through. Got a wrench it through. He has support on the inside. He goes on his own and he scored. What about that? And an absolutely nothing. The first try of the second half. The Warrington fans go absolutely wild. And young Connor Wrench won't score a more important try. Warrington are banged back in this playoff eliminator. And it's exactly what Sean O'Loughlin was saying about in the studio. Challenge St. Helens on the edges. More ball movement, more options for defenders to try and solve. Popoat is done on the outside there for Wrench. And then Wellsby's tried to be cute, nearly got Wrench, who's regathered his feet and scored the opening try for the Warrington Wolves. But it's all about this movement on the edge. Popoati stays too long on the lead runner. And Connor Wrench shows the dummy. Wellsby tries his best, the skip, the fall, the try, and how significant could that be in the story of this remaining half? I thought he'd blown it then. I thought he'd blown it when he went for glory on, him, on his own. The Warrington fans, look, the, an the anticipation. Jack Wellsby couldn't bring him down, and Connor Wrench, so strong, so powerful, so quick, got on the outside of Will Hoppawati. Poor effort from Hoppawati, beaten by the youngster. Wow. Gary Chambers, well, no emotion from the Warrington coaching staff. Stefan Ratchford has kicked 26 consecutive goals. This one would be priceless. Can he make it a two point ball game? Saints will be stunned by that because they've dominated this game and they have the first half chance of the second half. But yet, Warrington have got to go wide if they're going to beat St Helens. They've gone wide and they've got their reward. Ratchford, can he curl it in? An absolute beauty from Stefan Ratchford. Make that 27 consecutive successful conversions and penalties for Ratchford. All of a sudden, it's 8 6. Yeah, we're well, so confident. Just have a little look at the run here. Gets on the back of Opoati. At that point, uh, I thought he'd blown the chance. Dufty was pushing up. He manages to get it. And to the delight of the owner, Simon Moran, celebrating with the fans behind the sticks. Wow. Do you know what? I came here today, I'm talking to the lads before the game, John Wells and John Wilkins, saying about, look, this Warrington team, go back to round 26. They played really well. They played really, really well. No. Jordy Crowder gingerly getting up. 
Well, he got a bit of a bang in the, in the first half as well. He didn't make a big deal there. about it. Right, Jordi Crowder, it was over on that right edge, about 20 metres from his line. You can see, comes in, there's a bit of a shot up top from Alex Warnsey. That's where he gets hurt, look. But he got a bit of a whack in that first half. Look, where's the initial contact from Alex Warnsey? Well, it's shoulder to the head. Yeah, I'm doing that when the time is off. Well, Dan Taylor, I'm sure had a look at that on the big screen here at the TW. Well, this is it. We've seen these that have gone to the to the bin. Alex Warnsey comes in. Where's the initial contact from Warnsey's right shoulder? Where does it hit? And it hits him in the head. Yeah, there'll be, there'll, there'll be further action here. The mitigation will be that Crowder's dipping after that initial contact from Lou McCarthy Scarsbrook, but Ben Feather will have something to say about this, I'm sure. And Liam Moore, the video referee, will also be telling him what he's seen. Alex, ten. ten minutes in the sim, but Alex Warnsley. Well, he shakes his head, but you know if you want consistency from from referees and video refs. Listen to me. Right, right into the shoulder, that, that there's mitigation that was going to be that. going down. And like John right, said, because so he's going down, deliberate. if he wasn't it's going down, that was a clear shot to the head. That's that a would have been a red card. Correct, correct. That yeah. would have been a red card. It's a yellow because he's dipping. It's interesting because Ben Thaler just said exactly what you said, mitigating Crowder was going down. That's why it's yellow. Back up. Just one or two things starting to go right for Warrington. One or two things starting to go wrong for the Super League champions. <laughs> Always felt that if Warrington were in it at half time, still in this contest, still in with a shout, that they they could give it a real go in the second half. Go. One big blow for Warrington could be an injury to to George Williams. Actually, Let's uh, see what Jenna has to say. Yeah, actually uh, an existing injury. We know that he missed a couple of weeks with that thigh injury uh, uh, just earlier this month. Well, I noticed in that first half he did receive treatment on that injury and as he came out for the second half, he now has that strike. So keep your eye on George Williams. Yeah. Thanks, Jenna. Little kick over the top, shakes his arm and Wellesby does well, stays in the field of play for this is a motivated, a rejuvenated, a confident Warrington side who believe, but just too quick on the play the ball and caught offside. Brilliant defensive positional effort from uh, Jack Wellsby as well to get back into field, and then, yeah, it's Harrison. Uh, Bullock, rather, just too quick off the mark. But good clean-up work by that man at the back. Positional, perfect, and then that second effort to get back in field. You know, so what is Saints' response now? We've been talking about what Warrington were going to do when they came to the home of the champions. We're now talking about how Saints are going to respond, dealing with the next nine minutes with uh, with just 12 men on the field. Obviously, Alex Wormsley in the sin bin for that high contact on Jordy Crowther. There he is. Big Al. Would you believe he's hot-footing it to a wedding in the Lake District when this, when this game is over? Alex Wormsley, will he be going as a winner or a loser? At the moment, his absence may have an impact on this game. We shall see. When you look at when they played Lee in the three, semi-final of the Challenge Cup and three. they lost Metaltia for ten minutes, they went on to, to lose the game. I'd be hoping Lightning doesn't strike Four. twice. Movement, John. Certainly a different Four. Warrington Four. side Four. in this second Four. half. Four. Lomax, Metaltia with the offload and... Uh, Wellsby couldn't get hold of it. Another St Helens mistake. Well, it's just for him the pressure, isn't it, from the winger, Matty Ashton, who comes in here. Look, the offload was on. He catches that cleanly. There's not a problem. Nobody in front of him probably gets on the outside of Dufty. But the effort from Matty Ashton 
to come in and close that play down and rescue the situation. He's been really significant, hasn't he, defensively? For we, we, we know wingers and we pay wingers for scoring tries, but some really significant defensive decision making there from, from Matty Ashton. Because look, Wellsby's call to Sione Matauti was the right one, and the ball was the right one. Everything was on, and everything was spoiled by the attentions of Ashton. Warrington have won their last three playoff matches against the Saints. They've won their last five knockout games against St Helens and Warrington. Of course, famously, that shock victory here in 2018 in the playoffs against Justin Holbrook's all conquering St Helens side. That uh, try right at the death from Tom Lynham. They beat them in the Challenge Cup a couple of times. But they're up for this now, make no mistake. Williams with the offload. Ratchford trying to find a way through. Bell with the tackle. Well, he must have got a call. It was a late call from the referee, Ben Taylor. Yeah. The Warrington fans were screaming for a penalty from Stefan Ratchford. And James Bell... The aggression that he shows, Stefan Rats was just saying to the physio, though, look, I'm OK, I'm OK, footwork, footwork, get on the inside. Oh, it's a tough call, that, for me. That is a very, very tough call. I don't like that. I don't like that. Because Ratsford, Ratsford stayed down, I think he's played for a penalty there. There's, a, there's nothing there, there's nothing there to me suggest that's a high tackle. Not a high tackle? No, it's not round, no. no. Well, the bottom line is that a penalty was given and that Warrington have the ball and Warrington are attacking the St Helens line. As I mentioned before, everything at the moment, all the little calls, all the little 50-50s are going the Warrington way, but they haven't there. And Matantia knocks on, and that's a big chance gone. Yeah, it's a big error that on the second play, isn't it, from Peter Matantia. Look at him fighting. Sirenen trying to get up and position himself at marker. He plants the ball down, and he can't get to the play the ball correctly. And it's the correct call from the, the referee, Ben Fairley. Just one thing about 12 men being on the field for... for perhaps those who haven't been out there and understood that. It's not just the extra workload that's shared amongst the 12 players. It's when you're in defence, that extra half a metre that the loss of a player creates between you. That makes everything that much harder for the defence, both in terms of workload and decision-making, and potentially that much easier for the attack, which is why mistakes like that from Atalta in this period are so costly. Big hit again, Curry was in there. Here is Lomax now. And Warrington very, very quick up in defence, very aggressive. A lot of passion in, in this Warrington side. Matautia can't find a way through. I have to say, the two back rowers, Nicholson and Curry, have been, have been terrific so far today. They've been decent bodyguards for the outside backs. Well, that's forward and it's a mistake anyway. And a couple of times that they're going at the line, the frustration from Belt trying to play at the line, pull defenders in. In the past, the execution wasn't good enough for James. Well, you give him big raps when he comes up with players, that wasn't good enough for him. Well, the, they're trying to play on Josh Drinkwater is what they're trying to do. They're trying to get out there and put Surinan on Drinkwater, a big back rower, on a on a, a half who's not renowned for his, his defensive prowess. It's just not come off for them this time. Warrington will believe they'll start believing even more because they've dominated this second half williams and it's play on making yeah. some couldn't get hold of it it was a gamble of the past but it's oh. off you go again and it's a set restart as i say every little thing at the moment is going warrington's way can they cash in go zero tackle the charge and it's a penalty, yeah, it's another nice penalty given away by St Helens. I think it's Matty Lees who's just come onto the field for LMS. He comes in, comes in with a big thunder, a shot. Where's the contact made? You can see here. Yeah, doing. Now is, or is it James Roby with the, the arm around the chops? Oh, he's got a couple to, to pick from. Going to be an easy two points here for Warrington. I might be wrong, but I think we're giving more penalties away in ten minutes. So we did him 40 and they're all for high tackles. 
Just give him to him, mate, please. All right, buddy. All right, Steph. Well, there you go. There's the message from the referee, Ben Saylor. Penalty, penalty, penalty. And they're for high tackles. Well, at one point, wasn't the, the penalty counts like 4 1 in, in Saints' favour? Now it's 5 4 in Warrington's favour. Yeah, this this is what we're talking about. You've got to play less on the field. There's more space in between you yeah. defensively. You're reaching more. That's where you get those those arms sneaking up, those secondary contacts with the head. That's the penalty. This is going to be a square ball game. Raxford will extend his goal no, no. kicking sequence and will be tied up with under half an hour to go. What a turnaround. What a turnaround in performance. What a turnaround in mood. What a turnaround in the atmosphere. The whole game have just been flipped in this second half and Stefan Ratchford 13 minutes into the second half is about to level this nail-biting playoff yep. and it's Saints 8, Warrington 8 and what a 27 minutes we're gonna have look when they got into the playoffs they were always gonna be in the mix and there's a smile on that man's face now Simon Moran the owner but when you look at them, they get into the mix, they get into the competition, they play against Saints, one of their arch rivals. So many decent games over the years that they've played against each other. Alex warms him out just over a minute to go before he enters back the field. And I think Warrington, you know, they came into this game, they weren't under pressure. The start of the year, they were incredible, scoring an average of 32 points. This Warrington side can score points and it shows that they're in the groove here. Good news for Warrington, Jordy Crowther has passed his HIA, so he will be back on the field. As Eight a, all, the Saints fans are silent, the Warrington fans are noisy. Yeah, as will Alex Wormsley, he'll be back on the field soon, and as Montalcio comes up with another error, St Helens will be delighted. They've conceded just two points with a man off the field. And another mistake from Atouch. It's not through lack of effort, is it? The ball is greasy. It's that time of year. It's just good initial contact. Well, believe it or not, as we approach 15 minutes of the second half, truly with ball in hand, this is going to be the first time that Saints had the ball inside the Warrington 20. We saw a, a high speculative kick early on, didn't we, before the Warrington try, which McCarthy Scarsbrook managed to grab on the last tackle. But Saints have been out fought and out fought so far in the second half. But here's Popolati. He will be hoping that this isn't his last ever game in the Saints jersey going back to Australia at the end of the season. Bell with the offload. Line Joe. Let him get up. Saints are back to 13. Walmsley is on the field. Roby not the best pass. And Bell has to take the tackle. All of it rushed at the moment from the champions. Here is Lomax. Walmsley. Curry again in there with the tackle. Short side it is. Wells being another mistake. From St Helens, well, the error count and the penalty count from St Helens for coach Paul Wellens in the second half is alarming. Yeah, it's, it's Saints are going to get the ball back here. There's a, there's a ball touched in flight. That's the ball oh, from Wells. Yeah, yeah well and it's touched by Williams. George Williams, his left arm. You see the idea? I still get the feeling though, Saints are trying to push stuff a little bit. They don't, they don't look settled. Playoffs are all about passion, all about belief, all about winning. And at the moment, we're locked at eight points apiece. Lomax now and Hopawati is looking to offload there to Wellsby. Warrington's turn to defend for the first time, really, in the second half. Nothing doing for Alex Warmsley. 12 yards away from the Warrington line. There's Bell. Bullock in there with the tackle. Go. Roby again, they go to the short side, and Lomax for Wellsby. Wellsby off Rose. Makinson! Makinson! Makinson will score the try to put St. Helens back in front. Great handling on that far side from Saints and Tommy Makinson. Try number 24. How important could that prove to be?
and Saints strike back in this fabulous, fabulous playoff eliminator. Well, when the pressure's on, they seem to respond, don't they? They have that ability when they're under a bit of pressure and the other team that they're playing is on the front foot. They come up with all the players, don't they? Good play from Jack Wellsby, keeps his on his feet. The ball from Mark Percival to Tommy Makinson, the Warrington fans thought it was forward. But this same time, just look at them. They get the ball up to Tommy Makinson, they don't need a second chance, do they? And that's Saints at the best, under pressure, have all the answers to the questions. And just look at the celebration, those three players, and that's what it means to Tommy Makinson. Yeah, you, you get the feeling that's a really significant moment in the game. You look at the, la the last the picture of the last 10 or 12 minutes, you've had Wormsley down to uh, Wormsley off the field, St Helens down to 12 men, the score's evened up by Ratchford for a penalty, and then the first opportunity they get back in the Warrington red zone, they post points, and that's the acts of a champion team. Yeah, Paddy for their thoughts. The Saints are about to reintroduce Morgan Knowles, and Moses and Bai is going to come on as well yeah. for Saints. Yeah, we just need to keep our game. For the business at the moment, James Roby is coming off, and Bai will come on. This is an important kick for Mark Percival. Is it going to be a six-point game, or will it be a four-point game? I can't. Yeah, for the moment it left the boot, no problem at all, three out of three for Mark Percival, still 22 minutes to go, James Roby in his last ever appearance in his hometown is having a rest and Saints lead once more by 14 points to eight. Yeah, it's good setup as well for the try, James Roby off the field, he's replaced by Moses and by... We don't yet know whether his work is done, but yeah, just beautiful set up play again. James Bell heavily involved, and then the superstars of this Saints side culminating in Tommy Makinson's try on the 56 minutes. A key, key moment now. How how do Warrington, can Warrington respond to this? Well, a couple of changes for Warrington in James Harrington and Jordy Crowder coming back onto the field. Worth mentioning as well, the rain is getting harder. Well, look at the reaction there. Yeah. It was a big, big tackle. Saints not liking that. Well, Joe Bullock it was who, who comes in. And just trying to get into Saints. Like I said at the start, unsettle them. And Joe Bullock, Bullock goes hunting straight from the kickoff, trying to monster Saints with a big challenge. Matty Lee is one of the best. See Ben Curry just underneath him. See where the arm um, hits. Shoulder hits. Well, this is a, another big call this for the referee, Ben Thaler. This is a huge call, an absolutely huge call. I mean, there's no doubt it's it's a it's a really forceful contact it's where that initial contact is is it shoulder up into head or is it direct contact with the head well joe bullock's going to be in trouble i think liam moore the video referee as well will be will be yeah. telling ben Thaler what he's yeah. seen I, I, I think that's a that's a bad looking challenge that's Yellow a bad card. looking challenge. I think there's a card coming of some yeah. colour. I think it's is, it is it secondary contact? Uh, I, think, I, I think it'll be yellow card. It is. It's yellow. Yeah, it's, it's the same as what we saw with Alex Warren. Yeah, it, well, it? it's, it's slightly different. It's, 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 it's secondary contact is with the head, which is why it's a yellow. If this, because there's no, miti there's no mitigation. Yeah. yeah, look, there's no direct contact with the head. You yeah. see, where he hits him, it goes up. It does look bad. The reaction from the Saints plays his teammates. Says it all. And the ref had a look at it. Ben fell along with the video referee, Liam Moore. Now, how can 
Warrington react now with 12 men. Okay, 14 8 St Helens lead. Let's go. Uh, let's go pit side, Jenna. Yes, yeah, Stuart. Moments ago, we saw James Roby, the captain, the superhero, if you like, come off to a standing ovation. Is that his final involvement here at the Totally Wicked Stadium? We know he is retiring at the end of the year. 550 appearances today. Uh, 20 seasons in Super League. I mean, incredible player, and the fans here just love him. And he's top tackler, Pike, and he's not even broke the sweat. There's not a bead of sweat on him. He'll be back on. Don't worry about that. Here is Warnsley looking for room down the middle. Still only six points in it. An hour gone. Of course, there's 20 to go, and Lomax looking to find Sione Matautia through the gap there. Ratchford in with the tackle, along with Get up. Go. the hard-working oh. Daryl Clark, who'll be playing oh. his trade on this ground for Saints Damn. next year. God, it's a space now for Wellesby. Wellesby for oh. Benison, and Jack Wellesby doesn't often get it wrong with those slide passes, but he did then. Let off for Warrington. 19 Play minutes. 14-8, Saints in front. Yeah, just needed it in front of him, didn't he, John Look Benison? Middle, Look at that. Whether or not he'd have enough pace to get to the, the try line, the ball goes over the top. He give himself a chance. Really difficult for the youngster to catch that ball then. That's a Gary winger would have, would have caught that ball. John would have, John Wells it's just, it's just, look, Jack. Jack Wellsby, I sense a, an element of frustration in him this evening that I've not seen uh, uh, many occasions this season. Just a little bit too much on that ball. Williams now then. Here is Curry up against Purcell, but again, Warrington using the flanks and using it to great advantage. That's where they've got a strike, because that's where they will hurt St Helens. So who do you want on the ball now if you're a Warrington player? It wouldn't be though, because it'd be George Williams. He needs to get his hands on the ball as much as possible now. Harrison brought down on halfway. A couple of tackles left in this set for Warrington. Go play on four. Play on. 14 points to eight. Five. Darrell Clark goes down. Last one. Now, will it go to Williams? Will it go to Drinkwater? Drinkwater at dummy half, so it does go to George Williams. That's a spiralling kick watched by Jack Wellesby. Takes it well, still the rain is falling. Wellsby through a gap, Wellsby still going, and That's a well done by Connor Renshi. He was pushed off the ball, but he kept pace with him and he got his man. What a brilliant, what a brilliant run, what a brilliant response. He's overcooked a pass to John Benison, cleared that from his mind, and he's earned his team 20 metres there. Papalati, nowhere to go. Wellsby wears his heart on his sleeve. Absolutely. Does Jack Wellsby? Just shy of halfway. Warmsley now. Last one. What's the plan on the last? And by finds Lewis Dodd. It's a high kick back from Dodd, and Dusty watches it well, takes it well. Always dangerous in open play, Matt Dusty, but Saints watching him carefully. Well, the Saints now will just be looking to close this game down. 18 minutes to go, been in this situation many a time. And Warrington knowing that they've got to come up with something special to break. Saints down. Danny Walker back onto the field looking to speed the game up with leaving Darrell Clark on. All about trying to generate those quick play the balls. And I'm sure that the, in the next couple of minutes we'll be looking at bringing Sam Cassiano onto the field for a big finish. What was a special atmosphere? It's a special feel. About the Super League playoffs. And still, we don't know who's going to be playing where next year as Dusty looks to offload the tackle from Dodd. Just inside the Saints half of the field. Pressure on Drinkwater, who did get the ball away. Benison does well, but then slips, and the rain just beginning to. To play a part, isn't it? Benison there deciding just the he right decision. He was wow. going to offload, wasn't he? It he was. He was getting a bit man to handle then. He was looking to offload the ball to, to Jack Wellsby. As it stands, St Helens will be playing in Perpignan Boom. against Catalan live on Sky Sports next Friday. And that would mean, of course, that Hulk KR would go to Wigan again live. Four. 
on Sky Sports next Saturday. But there's still 16 minutes to go. Still a lot can happen here at the TW Stadium. Last tackle. Good defensive set from Warrington off the back of that. It's a good kick, good chase, and shuts at Helens down. Dodd along the, the floor this time. No problem for Dusty. Of course, the grand final coming up, live and exclusive, Saturday the 14th of October from Old Trafford. For all the information you need, that's the website, superleague.co.uk. 15 minutes left. You can just feel the tension. And both teams here are a wait, bit wait, anxious, wait, aren't they? Wait, wait. Warrington knowing that they need to be next on the scoreboard. And Saints just knowing that they've got to make sure that they keep playing the game out. Well, there's the offloads. Here is Ratchford. Ratchford, he's always dangerous with ball in hand, isn't he? Two tackles left in this set for Warrington. That's great work. Just great work from Mark Percival. The last three plays, he's not committed to a defender. He's watched Ratchford and then he's got out of dummy half and he's made the key involvement there to dislodge the ball from Matty Ashton. Great work from the centre, Mark Percival. Well, Moses and Bayern, just look at that. Hit around the ball in these conditions where it's been raining from the, the start of the game. Mark Percival over the top, but the damage from Moses and Bayern just dislodges that ball. So how has it won eight consecutive playoff matches since that shot defeat in 2018 by Warrington on this ground? Can they make it nine or can Warrington end the reign of the Super League champions, which has so far lasted an astonishing 1,449 days? Wait! No, you know, square Daniel Clark! Here's Wormsley. Good run. Boom, Marcus, Make good yardage, it's important, it's important it's yardage. Yeah, good metres after contact from him. Move! Dubai right. takes play into the Warrington half Go. of the field. Four, Knowles, move, nowhere to go. Ready for. Go. Two left in this set. Lomax and Wellsby. Swivels out of one, can't get out of another. Yes, he can. He's still swiveling, he's still going. Here is Dodd. Dodd with a kick through towards the line. That's a really good kick of Matty Russell. Terrific defence. He had to come across under pressure. He had to take the ball. Then he had to stay in the field of play. He's come up with some massive players, hasn't he, Matty Russell? To save a try. Good positioning from him. And now just look how difficult it's going to be here for Warrington. Where they've got the... Well, they're going to be brave enough to shift the ball. You see George Williams just carrying the ball. He knows that Move. some of his teammates have been doing it really tough. Go. Ratchford, the captain Five. of the ship. Move back on side. They've got to midway inside their own half. Go. And it is now raining decidedly harder here in St Helens. There's the kick from... Drink water and watch very carefully by Benison, taking no chances at all, just happy to go to ground. That was a that was a good kick in the conditions. Yeah, well knock out your sets now. That's what Saints will need to do. You'll see that Lewis Dodd and, and Johnny Lomax will just be directing the troops what they want from their outside backs, what they want from the forwards. Tommy Makinson coming off the wing, and it's a, a strong challenge, a strong carry from him. The Saints already thinking about drop goals. Go three. Uh, do you know what? I just think they're going to go. They're, they're looking to go set for set. The weather, the weather has really deteriorated over the last kind of five or ten minutes. It's going to take advantage and take all the juice they can out of a 12-man Warrington Wolves. Sirenen looks to have copped a stinger in the middle of that tackle. I'm not. Sure, I'm not sure we'll drop goal territory yet. I just think they're using. They're going to use up and burn up energy from this Warrington Wolves side. That's the offload. From Wormsley, Saints losing a little bit of ground. Matty Lee's picking up the loose ball, but straightens up and just goes back to where Wormsley offloaded. It's as you were. Last one. Dodd. That's a difficult one for Russell. Saints come up with the ball. But Warrington did well, managing to wrap up Jack Wellsby. Eliminate the threat of the Saints' star fullback. Yeah, you're right. It was Danny Walker that saved the situation, wasn't it? 
As soon as that ball comes down, that man gets all of it. Danny Walker had to shut the, the tackle down. And the games and shit going on between Jack Wellsby and Matt Dufty. The passion of the playoffs. Outstanding. If you can't play in the playoffs, you're never going to be able to play. The excitement of maybe getting down the road to Old Trafford. That's why you play. You play rugby league to be involved in big occasions like this. You listen to the atmosphere, get you through it, get you going. Rapsford now. Such a good elusive runner, isn't it, Stefan Rapsford? Quick play the ball. Warrington have got to gamble now. They're going to try and shift it out to this right-hand side, but nowhere for their try scorer Connor Wrench to go. Guys, wait. Go. On halfway, here is Big Sam back on. A wrecking ball. Can he do some damage for Warrington inside this last ten minutes? Last one, they're running it. Dusty, this is great play. Mickelson with a little kick forward and. Uh, it was well read in the end by Lewis Dodd, but there's the danger. Yeah, Lewis, Lewis Dodd's done really well. He's done really well in the main defensive line. I think he's, he's dealt with that right edge attack, that shift attack from Warrington. Not got himself caught in, has managed to, to, to map off in, in coaching terminology and take tackles and then bang in the right position where he needed to be to tidy up that kick. Warrington are trying a goal behind, that's all. They've given it a mighty go. Their motto of no fear. Move that all. Ready, boys, go. Lay on. And Bai does well. Look to go through the gap, and he does. He's got to port as Moses and Bai. He's got to port one way or the other, but he was caught between two. My, Moses and Bai. And I think both the runners were in front of him as well. They were going too quick. Here is Dodd. Sirenin. Back to Lewis Dodd. One so more far. try now for Saints, and surely that would be it. Well, it might be a penalty. It might be a penalty that'll do it. And that's a high only tackle need. by Matt Russell on John Benison. That's all they need. Like people were thinking, like with just nine minutes to go, maybe it's one point they'll go for. The high shot from Matty Russell is sufficient enough for the referee to blow the, yes. the penalty and two points, surely. Hey, He's on offer, and Matt Percival's no, going to take it. Yes, mate. Well, hey, well done. Decision to be made here. Mark no, well. Percival's coming over. Time off. Yeah, you, you take the two. Go for the two. Hundred percent, you take the two points. Well, they give you two scores in front. They get this now. Here, then boy. Warrington have got to keep the ball alive. Like you said five minutes ago, the rain's teeming down now. Makes it difficult if you're going to try and shift the ball from inside your twenty and open the game up. You'll find it difficult if Saints are flying off the line in front of you. Yeah, I mean, just cars will tie that's on. Well, when they had that break, then. Brilliant game. Well, KR, the first team through to the semi finals after the eliminator yeah. last night. Anyway, yeah. Are they going to Catalan? Are they going to Hull KR? To Wigan, rather, next Saturday. If Mark Percival gets this penalty, then. It's a long way back for Warrington. It looks like right, Saints right. are going to Perpignan on next Friday, and Hulk KR will be going to Wigan on Saturday. Playoff games are won by important moments, by big moments. Fine margins. And this is yeah, a fine margin kick, and it is a big moment. Well, he's kicked three from three in this game. I'm sure that this will be a further two points for Mark Percival and the Saints. Big, big moment. It's good enough, it's good enough, and Mark Percival makes it four out of four, and Warrington have got seven minutes now to score twice, Saints lead by 16 points to eight. You may remember back in 2017, with St Helens lost in that amazing playoff game to Castleford at the jungle. Castleford's last gap try, Luke Gale's amazing golden points. Drop goal to win it, Percival missed four kicks at goal. I'm it sure still be, hurts today. I'm sure they'll be happy you reminded him Absolute, about that, yeah, Stuart. Well. Back up Saints! Back up Saints! Saints get the ball. Tackle one! Move! Don't go early, James! Wait! Wait! Go! Go 
listening. Warrington have given it absolutely everything, but they've got to find something extraordinary. Yeah, and they've got to find it quickly as well. They've got to find something this set. Is there a hero? Is there a magic moment? We've seen so many amazing moments, haven't we, in the playoffs down the years? Since it started in 1998, this is the 155th Four. playoff game. Move! Wait! Wait! Square game 158 Jackson is at Old Trafford on the 14th of October. The Super League champions are five minutes away Go. Right. from another semi final. Watch him. Okay. Lomax. That slices off the in boot, but it's a good kick, and that'll waste up some seconds as well from Johnny Lomax. And now it's a case of Warrington of having to go for it. They've got to gamble, they've got to throw it out, and they've got to find find some joy to attack those Saints edges. Yeah, of course they haven't. Do you know what? Gary Chambers turned up here with the right game plan. When you spoke to him just before half-time and talked about how they play the game, how they play the conditions, They've come up with a, a good showing, but up against the, a champion side that Move. says, back away, back said it last time they were on, boys, on TV, boys. World Club champions, they lost Go, five of their opening ten Super League. There was their own fans saying that they were finished. This is They've a great a side. Now, have they? No, well, he just managed to keep hold of it. Mind you, if he had a clean catch there, Matty Ashton, it had opened up for him. Four and a half minutes to go. St. Helens leading by 16 points to eight. Walker, great run, and oh, well, that was so close. I'll tell you what, if he'd managed to keep hold of that, there was a chance. In dry conditions, he would have kept all of that. He was through, he was through the gap. Yeah. Good ball, good line from Joe Philbin. Unfortunately, he couldn't quite take it. What we talked about before, fine margins. Absolutely. And, you know, if St. Helens do go to Catalans, which is looking probable now, the Dragons are watching on here, and they're looking at St. Helens' side, whilst whilst maybe have not been at their attacking sharpest, have missed just eight tackles in a game against the Warrington side, that certainly in this second half decided to throw the ball around. You know, that, that would be a, a real headache for, for Steve McNamara's men to figure out. Louis McCarthy Scarsbrook playing his last game in St. Helens. What a servant he has been. LMS, 37 years of age. Lomax. Swung to the ground by Cassiano. Two tackles left in the set. Wellsby again, and Matautia makes the error. He was just trying to get that catch and pass, wasn't he? You could tell by the way he positioned his hands out in front of him. He just wanted it early just to tip it on. Unfortunately, there was some pressure from Stefan Ratchford. Who's the coach? <laughs> no. In his rookie season, he's won the World Club Championship, of course, in Australia. I'm sure there's a few more players on that than what there was at the start of the year. Stay outside, boys! That's what it does for <laughs> Not in your case, it just disappears. It just falls out. Knock it off, Nick. Heads in, Matt! Is there that magic moment? Is there a hero in the Warrington ranks? It was that man, Connor Wrench, scoring just after half-time. It gave Warrington hope. My right tackle, Will Hopawati. So still some hope for Warrington. They started the season like a train, eight consecutive victories. They fell away after that. They finished sixth, 12 points behind St Helens. But they've given it. Absolutely everything. But Super League champions and champion side produce champion moments and champion performances. Yeah, they do. There's, look, Warrington have got a late chance here. I, I don't think it's going to affect the outcome of this game. But you're looking at a side here that not playing at its best, I'll say it again now, just nine missed tackles. They've made seven breaks. And that'll be a frustration for Paul Wellens. They've not been able to ice those opportunities, partly down to the weather, what partly down to some, some great scramble, last-ditch defence from the Warrington Real Wolves. But you're seeing a side here playing at probably 80% that's going to go into a semi-final. Dusty. Here is Wrench. Uh, that's it. 
Saints celebrate, they know this game is won, this game is done, and St. Helens are heading to Catalan for the Super League semi-finals. An emotional day for many on the St. Helens side, for Louis McCarthy, Scarsbrook, for the man they call the greatest of all time, James Roby, who won't be coming back onto the field. And isn't that going to be a match, Stuart, next week as well? You've got four retirees that we know about. Lou McCarthy, Scarsbrook, James Roby, Mitchell Pearce, or Sam Tompkins. One, you know, two of those four will be retiring at the end of that game. There he is. Next week will be the 594th game of his career. <laughs> That's incredible, isn't it? In the, it's not even as though he played in the outside backs. He's been in the engine room from the start when he made his debut as a youngster. Obviously, his face has changed a bit. His hairstyle's changed a bit since then. Who's hasn't, Terry? Sirenin. A minute and 20 seconds to go. 1,449 days is going to become 1,450 and onwards until at least next Friday in the south of France in Perpignan against the Catalan Dragons. And it's not been vintage, Stuart, it's not been vintage, but it's been enough. It's been enough to take them to a semi-final and to continue that run and that drive for five. But it's been great. Playoff fair, hasn't it? It's been has been a pulsating game, good kick from Dodd and good take from Dufty, but it will matter Stand not. Up. We're into the last Come minute here. Warrington, the last time, of course, they won a championship way back in 1955. They've lost Move. four grand finals, and next Move. year it's about Sam Go Burgess on. coming in to try and win. A title, win the Super League. Move! For the team to beat is St. Helens. I, I think they have been phenomenal the past five years. They are ultra-professional, right the way through the club. The work they do every year, every year, people want to beat them. And they know they've got to be on the guard. They are incredible. Well, they're going to get a play -off. They are the professionals of their but the Hooter was about to go, but the Warrington captain wouldn't have any of it. Kicks the ball into touch, so one last play. One last play for Warrington. And one last play for St Helens to defend. Williams goes high, and uh, the ball goes to ground. And that is it. The Super League champion, St Helens, march on. They march on to the south of France next Friday and Paul Wellens in his rookie season looking to lift the Super League crown and make it five on the spin for Saints. An emotional day for James Roby, his last ever match in his hometown but he's got some more games to prepare for, he will hope two more we now know that Catalan will take on St. Helens next Friday in the...